breathing correctly doesn't come natural for most people. You, when you're stressed, you can find yourself breathing like this, or worse yet, not breathing at all, holding your breath. Pay attention to see how many times a day you have to remind yourself to take a deep breath. Let's look at what a good breath looks like. Put one hand on your stomach and put another hand on your chest. Now relax and take a deep breath. Does your stomach come out first before your chest? Or did your chest rise and fall without your hand coming out from your stomach at all? A good deep breath means your abdomen is relaxing and expanding. You might even feel it in your back as well. For some people, their stomach moves, but their chest doesn't move at all. For me, a deep breath means my chest moves, but only after my abdomen. A clear way to recognize a good breath is when you go to sleep at night. Lie on your back and relax. I bet your tummy rises and falls with every breath that you take and your shoulder doesn't move at all. That's a really good relaxed breath. Now when we turn 35, our lungs start, our lung capacity start to deteriorate. Our muscles become weaker, so we have to exercise them to keep them strong, just like every other part of our body. Our diaphragm muscle is in charge of our lungs. It's right here, and it looks like a giant mushroom head that separates our chest from our abdomen. In order to increase our lung capacity, we can do a diaphragm stretching exercise. Actors do this exercise to calm them down. Let's do this exercise together. I set my metronome to 60, so that's one click for every second. Relax. Now, take a deep breath through your mouth for five counts. Hold it, don't let it out. Now, pack it down towards your diaphragm muscle, as if you were trying to fart. Take another breath on top of it. And pack that down as well and take one more breath on top of that if you can. Hold it for eight counts. Now, pursing your lips, let the air out slowly for eight counts. Okay, pursing, pursing your lips like this is teaching your body to get used to the compression that we will feel when we play our instruments. Each musician feels a different amount of compression depending on their instrument and depending on their setups. Oboes feel a lot of compression because of their tiny reeds. Flutes almost feel no compression at all, so they have to build compression using their embouchure. Even clarinet players can differ from each other depending on how hard their reeds feel or their setup. But you can prove to yourself that this exercise is working by playing an open G Set your metronome to 60, and then take a deep breath and hold your open G. Keep in mind how long you can hold your open G for. Now, do the exercise. And after you do the exercise, set your metronome to 60 again and try to hold the open G. I bet you've been able to increase, increase the length of your open G by quite a bit. Do this exercise once or twice a day while you're first learning, and breathing deeply will become a really healthy habit for you. Good luck. Setup includes the mouthpiece, the reed, and the ligature. If there's something wrong with your setup, it can make you feel like playing the clarinet is very hard. It is supposed to be easy, so let's learn. Let's start with just the barrel and the mouthpiece. Right now your hands are little and holding up the whole clarinet can be challenging. Let's start with putting the mouthpiece onto the barrel. It's easy, but the mouthpiece is the part of the clarinet you have to be terribly careful handling. Your mouthpiece should look like this. No chips along the sides, no cracks in the tip. Scratches from the ligature are okay, but not here or here. Let's put it together. First, let's look at the mouthpiece. See the cork at the bottom? It needs to be made slippery with cork grease. I like this kind. It smells good. Here's how you put it on. Don't put on a lot. See how much easier it goes on? You shouldn't have to struggle getting it together. Now, stick a reed in your mouth. Don't suck it or chew on it. 
it's not tasty anyway. It just needs to be moistened with your saliva so it will vibrate better. Let's talk about ligatures. There are so many kinds of ligatures. Their job is to hold the reed onto the mouthpiece. As a beginner, you'll probably get something that looks like this when you get your clarinet. I like the Rovner for beginners. It's not metal and it won't scratch the mouthpiece or crack if it gets over tightened. Do you notice that some ligatures have the screw in the back and some in the front? The ones in the back are called reverse and they are good if your chin sticks out or hits the screws on regular models. As you get older, you can get fancier ones, but for now, what came with your clarinet is fine. Now, a lot of people put their reed on and then their ligature. I like my students to put the ligature on first so there's no risk of smashing the tip of your reed or chip your mouthpiece while slipping the ligature on. Put your ligature on first. Lift the ligature up with your finger. Take the reed out of your mouth. Now carefully slide the reed into that slot you made. Now lower your ligature and tighten or loosen so we can properly align the reed to the mouthpiece. Here's how it should look. Now you try. You're going to be doing this a lot and I know you're going to be an expert soon. Just in case you forgot your ligature at home, you can always use a rubber band. It takes a little bit more time to put it on, but it works just as well. Clarinets are cool. We're ready to toot. So let's see what we have here. We have our setup, the mouthpiece, the reed, and the ligature. The reed height should be just like this, a tiny bit showing over the top. If it's too high on the mouthpiece, it's gonna feel a little heavy. If it's too low, it's gonna be flabby and you're gonna have trouble making high note sounds. So let's talk about the embouchure. The embouchure is what our muscles form in order to make a good tone. We don't want to swallow our lips inside our mouth like this. We don't want to have a round chin like that. We want to engage our very powerful muscles that are located around our lips. How do we do that? Well, let's take our finger and push it against our bottom lip. Our bottom lip is not going inside our mouth, but it is resting in front of our bottom teeth, right? Now, with our bottom lip, we want to push against the force of our finger and look what happens. We get muscles and they show up. You might feel a little bit warm here and here. That's good, it means that your muscles are engaging. We're ready to toot. So let's make the muscle. It's called what? Embouchure, very good. Let's make it. Now let's replace our finger with our setup. Now we're gonna put our top teeth down on the top part of our mouth. We're not gonna bite, we're just gonna rest our teeth there. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna take our top lip and squeeze our top teeth with it. Again, muscle, clarinet. Now, we're gonna blow. I call that my lonesome goose sound. Now, if yours didn't sound like mine, you might not be opening the barrel enough with your hand. You might have be like this, covering it up, Make sure you're opening it up. There's an area here that you should stay clear of. And also use your left hand to push up against the muscle that you're pushing. You remember how your, your finger felt pushing against your bottom lip? Use that force. Again, engage these muscles. Pointy chin, not round, not swallowing your lips. Rest the clarinet, teeth down. I always begin with my tongue, which means actually feel my tongue hitting the tip of this reed, like this. I can feel it. Can you? Put it inside your mouth again. Lo, 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 lo. Can you feel it? I like to put my tongue on the reed first and then blow. I feel pressure here and here. That means there's enough gas in the car to start it going, enough air behind the tongue to produce the sound right away. When I feel there's air there, then I let go of the tongue. I pull it back slightly in my mouth. Embouchure first, not like this, but like this. Corners firm, pushing forward, not smiling back, pushing forward. That 
let's hear the sound that you're making. First, could you listen to my sound? Now, your turn. Does it sound like the same pitch? Ooh, that's quite good. Guess what? We're ready to put the clarinet together. Let's open the case and learn about a few things on the clarinet that we need to be careful with when putting it together. We should have enough cork grease on the end joints so that the clarinet goes together this easily. If your clarinet is new, it may take a few times of putting cork grease on and putting it together to get the corks broken in enough to go together this easily. Now let's talk about the bridge key. It's a very vulnerable part of the clarinet when putting it together and taking it apart. When you push the first finger down on the lower joint, you will see the bottom part of the bridge key go up. When you push the second finger down on the top joint, you can also see the top part of the bridge key go up. These little corks are important in the mechanism of the keys and we don't want to rip them off when putting it together. It is very important that we align the bridge, the top and bottom parts, very well. When properly aligned, the top cup will not bounce up and down when we push down the first ring on the lower joint. Let's mess it up. Let's see what it looks like. See the bouncing? That's not good. Let's fix it. We're aligning it much better, pushing it down, and there's no bounce. Good. Check those bridge key corks every once in a while and make sure they are still there. Now let's talk about where we can put our hands when we're putting the clarinet together. It is very important not to grab the clarinet across the bottom rod. These can bend easily, especially on student model instruments. When they bend, they put the cups at the bottom of the clarinet out of alignment. Make sure yours is straight and are both the bottom cups at the same height? If you look at the left hand keys, you will see three levers. Mine has four, but most others will have three. If you press this key, the B E key, you can check to see if the first cup on the right side of the clarinet is going down all the way. Also check these keys. This foot in between the levers likes to get bent. Remember not to grab the clarinet by the long rod. You can grab as hard as you like over the keys where your fingers normally go. My favorite place is down here, but you can grab anywhere you feel comfortable as long as it's not on the long rod. Now let's move on. I'm a little far away from you right now because I wanted to show you something that might happen if you're not careful. If you're like me, you're not blessed with very long legs and sometimes the chairs at school are a little tall for you. If that's the case, then your thighs are not parallel to the ground. And in that case, when you go to open your case, sometimes, oops, it might go flying. So it's really important if you're like me to make sure your thighs are level and that your clarinet will stay, your clarinet case will stay in your lap without your hands touching it. So I have to get up on my tippy toes or I like to wear high heels, but when you open your case, make sure that your knees are up high enough to keep it from falling off. Now, the first thing we wanna to put together is the bottom joint to the bell. The reason we do this is it's a very strong place, you know, to put on your thigh when you need to push it together. So the bell already has a bottom that can rest against surfaces without any damage. You really don't wanna rest against any surface, these little delicate spots, because they can chip off. They can be repaired, but it's kind of a drag. So let's put the bell on. This particular bell doesn't have the metal ring at the bottom. Some do, some don't, and I don't really have a preference, but didn't want you to think it was weird. So here we have the bottom joint and the bell stuck together. Notice I did not put my hands on the long rod. We don't want to do that. So I like my habit is here. You can definitely hold it here. And you can squeeze pretty hard. Now we've got the middle, the top joint that we have to put with the bottom joint. So we've got to be very careful again. Remember about the bridge key that is here. So we put our second finger here and you can grab it like a baseball bat. You're not going to hurt it. And we put our top hand right here and then we put it together. I've already greased my corks, but you might have to grease them before you put them on. And I think it's a good idea for you to do it while it's still in the case. It makes it easier for you. So it's pretty aligned. It's very nice, nice and straight here. And I've already checked my one in one and there's no bumping here. So I did okay. How did you do? Now we're ready for what? 
the barrel. So this barrel has a label on the front, as most of them do, and you can align it. Some say it's a big deal. I like the way it looks, but it's not a great big deal. So now what we have left is the thing we have to be very careful with, and that's the mouthpiece. So it's easier to put the mouthpiece on without the ligature and the, the cap, but it makes it a lot more vulnerable, so please be careful. So I've got mine nicely greased, but this is not my normal horn, so it's gonna be a little tighter. And if you notice, I'm pushing pretty firmly against my thigh with the bell. Don't be afraid to do that. You're gonna need that leverage. And once it's there, with no gaps yet, we'll talk about gaps later, we'll put the ligature on carefully so it doesn't nick the tip, and then I really like to put the mouthpiece cap on no matter what, right away, because it does protect the clarinet mouthpiece if it falls to the ground and your surfaces on the ground are gonna be pretty hard. So then I close my case and notice I'm not taking my hand off the clarinet and I put my case on the ground. We're ready to go. Great job, we're finished practicing. But there are a few important things we need to do to the clarinet before we put it away. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen our ligature and then we're gonna push our reed up. And if you notice on the back of the reed, there's gonna be a little condensation. It's not spit and it's not gross, but I like to wipe it off on my leg. Then I put it away in my reed case. You might have something smaller or you might just be able to put it in the sleeve in which the reed came. After we do that, we're gonna gently take off the ligature and take the mouthpiece off the clarinet. The whole time I'm holding the clarinet with my legs sitting in the chair. You don't need to set it down, but don't let go of it if your legs aren't holding it. So the first thing we do is we wipe off the mouthpiece, the edges of the mouthpiece and a little bit in the center. I really don't want you to run the swab through the clarinet, and we'll talk about swabs in a second, because it can really damage the swab I mean, damage the mouthpiece. It can nick the sides or the string, the ribbon that holds the weight of the swab can act sometimes like a rasp. A rasp is like a file. And if you pull it through quickly, you're gonna change the shape of the facing of your mouthpiece. And remember from the setup video, this is the most important part of your clarinet. So then we put the ligature back on carefully. And my favorite part, you take the mouthpiece cap and you put it on and then stick it into your case safely. Now, here's the fun part. There are many different types of swabs. You'll probably get a swab that's made out of handkerchief material or you might also get those little tiny squares of fuzzy material and hopefully most clarinet makers aren't putting those into the clarinets but sometimes you get an old one that does. Throw that one away. Um, it's too fuzzy and the fuzz it's very thick and the fuzz sometimes gets into the tone holes and changes the way they sound. So I would use either a handkerchief, you know, a fancy one. This one is made of silk. My teacher gave me a long time ago. I've had this forever. It lasts a long time. It's also thin and it doesn't get caught as much. What's popular today are these microfiber swabs. They're fantastic too. And they're shaped in really wonderful sizes that aren't that thick. But even though they're shaped wonderfully, every once in a while, Murphy's Law, it'll get stuck inside the clarinet. So if you look at your clarinet through the bottom, you can see the condensation. Also, if I turn the clarinet the other way around, you're gonna see that there's something that sticks out from the top of the clarinet or from one of the sides of the clarinet. That is your vent tube and that sticks out from here. It affects the way the B-flat sounds and your second octaves. So what you want to do is you want to put the vent tube facing up so that when gravity pulls the weight through the, through the clarinet from the swab, it'll slip underneath the vent tube. Boom, like this. And I just swab through once um, because I swab a lot. I'm a very spitty player. So every once in a while, when you're not careful, and you know, some people really love to put their swab through the top and swab down, and some people like to swab from the bell and swab up. I don't really care. Um, I like the bell because it's a bigger hole. <laughs> so anyway, um, every once in a while, 
especially when you don't have a lot of time to swab, you're not being careful with the bottom being open. And that's one thing I should probably tell you to do. Try to open this up when you swab. If it's bunched up and stuff like this, and then you pull through here, you're definitely gonna get your swab stuck. So if it's open like this, and for some reason, you know, it happens, it's not a big tragedy. Oh, I'm faking, but we're pretending that the swab is stuck. The first thing you should do is see if you got lucky. Take the middle joint apart and see if the swab is sticking up in the bottom. If it's sticking up in the bottom, then you could pull it through this way and you get a second chance at it. But today we weren't lucky and it's stuck really good in here. So don't stick anything in the clarinet that doesn't belong there. So if you think you should stick a rod in there, please don't do that yet. Um, try this one method first. Um, just twist the swab, twist the top, and as you can see with my other hand, I'm twisting it the opposite direction. So I'm making the swab skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, and then eventually, oh, it just popped out so easily. So don't panic when that happens, and try really hard not to stick things in there yet. Um, and if it's still stuck, you know, ask your band director for help, and don't let him stick a rod in there either. Um, or, you know, you can always take it to your music store if it's really terrible. The other thing that might happen when you take your clarinet apart, especially when you first have a brand new clarinet, is this top joint here likes to get saturated with water when it's first new. That's why I like to put a little bit of cork grease. Mine has a metal ring on the top, but some of them have no metal ring on it. Most of them don't. So you're going to want to seal that a little bit, you know, like you seal your skin from moisture is, or with moisture. You want to put some cork grease around the edges and probably a little bit in the center. I do that all the time. But even when you take really good care of it, we live here in Buffalo and the weathers are harsh, you know, the weather is very harsh here. So it'll get stuck and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I need to get to my next class. Well, you can leave it with your band director and he can leave it out on the shelf and let it dry out a little bit if, you do, if it doesn't fit back in your case and it won't. Or, you know, if you're at home, you can leave it out on the counter see if it'll change and then every once in a while come back to it and see if you can break it open or you know try really hard not to you know against your knee or anything like that or hit it with strange objects if you're really desperate and by the nighttime when you're ready to go to bed it still hasn't come apart stick it in the refrigerator for about 15 or 20 minutes because the refrigerator is cold and it's dry and we know what cold and dry does to things in size it shrinks them so we can then pull it apart don't panic. If you have to, you can always take it to the music store in the morning and they can get it apart. Please also don't try to shave it down with sandpaper. That's just gonna be a very bad thing for you to do because it'll change the shape of your clarinet. And that's gonna change anyway as it gets older. So one more thing before we can go outside to play is when you look inside the clarinet, these places here, these tendon holes, these tendon joints, they love to collect water. And when they collect water, they become like sponges and then they swell up and then you're gonna have that problem with it getting stuck to it together. So I like to take a cloth and wipe it out before I put it away. Sometimes, and I know that you will never have enough time when school starts again, the bell rings and you have to run to your next class and there's still water in there, do this like that and it'll shake the water out and at least you won't have a huge puddle it'll still be a little bit moist try not to shake it on someone else that's rude anyway i really enjoyed practicing with you today so go outside and have some fun <laughs>